Kata, thank you for taking the time to be here. Um, one of the questions I wanted to ask you is that, you know, as we look at the youth, as we look at shaping India, uh, there's a certain integrity, there's a certain ethos that we want to develop over time. And one of the things the Tata House is known for is its integrity and ethos. In what way has it been integrated? You know, you've been there since you were young. In what way was it integrated into you? In what way do you take it to the next generation? Well, uh, I think the integrity was embedded in the organization over 100 years ago. Maybe at a time when without integrity, a company would be considered to be unacceptable. Today, that's a little different. And uh, when I returned from the US, which is partly an accident, uh, I had the role model of J.R.T. Tata, who lived absolutely by the tenets of integrity that the founding fathers had, had left behind. And there was no issue of any deviation from it. He didn't, didn't himself deviate, nor did he accept anybody else who would deviate. So it was deeply ingrained in the organization throughout. All I did when I took over was protect it because I, I felt it needed vigorously to be protected because that is what made us different. You just said something, you came back accidentally. What did you mean by that? When I finished college, uh, the only thing I, I looked forward to was going where it was warm and not cold. Uh, and uh, that, that wasn't the accident. I, I worked in Los Angeles for a period of time, very happy there, doing very well and monetarily. Uh, my grandmother fell ill and asked for me and I returned and never went back to the US. So that was the accident. Okay. You know, you were just saying that, you know, that was the norm at that time. It may not be so today. So. When you look at the young people, the possibility that there is for India, what is your feeling when you look at young companies? What do you feel they have and what do you feel they should keep? Maybe I, I can answer your question by deviating a bit from the answer. Sure. Being at, at this event today and events like this, I have a sense of great remorse, uh, remorse that that I'm in my 70s and not in my 40s because at, at this point in time the young people are coming into their own and having an opportunity to express themselves, to innovate, to establish enterprises and that's terrific and, and that's what I would have loved to participate in and, and I'm sorry that our ages are different. Well, thank God you're mentally only 30, so you've got a long ways to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the problem is, to be frank, that if you don't try to regulate yourself and say that your time is up, who is to tell you that your, your memory is fading or that you're uh, getting a little senile? or that you're getting <laughs> hard of hearing, or that you don't see very well. So the best thing is to move aside and, and, and leave way for the young people who are going to be the future of this country to have their head. And I think that's why an event like this and what you're doing to encourage the young people is music to my ears. X Prize has struck me as being a tremendously strong motivator of innovation. In every way, XPRIZE is a tremendous motivator of today's times. And I, I hope it, the momentum that Peter's been able to create will continue and accelerate over the years, not only in the US, but now in India as we've, we brought it here. So Xenia, to continue on that, we brought XPRIZE to India, you're leading the efforts here. What would you like to see happen? What would you like to have this prize do 
in the Indian community. I'm hoping um, that over the next few years, we're able to launch a few prizes in different sectors, uh, addressing what now seems impossible in water, in energy, in how we view and deal with waste, um, um, possibly in corruption, women's issues. So hopefully, we'd, I'd like to see those few prizes come to fruition pretty quickly. But the prize is one part of the equation. The thing that really makes the prize work are the innovators, the people who, the teams that apply to compete for the prize. And I'm really hoping to see innovators from all parts of this country, both geographically and from all stratas of society, economic stratas especially. Um, I would consider, uh, you know, in, in understanding what your success statement is, is also important to examine what you don't want, right? So I would hate to see, um, an X Prize where the teams were only from the IITs, were only from the R&D departments of uh, big organizations, big companies. That would actually be hmm, kind of a failure, you know? But it would be wonderful to see young innovators, old innovators, innovators that come from the rising billion, innovators that come from rural areas. And then, of course, the challenge for us at X Prize is how do we level the playing field so that those innovators can truly participate? Because it's good enough to say, you know, you have to apply and then you get in, but it's a lot more than that. So how do we at X Prize, especially in India, how do we level the playing field so that innovators from a rural part of India, from rural Kenya, who are competing for a prize in India, can truly play on the same level as a team from IIT. So that's what I'd really like to see. You know, the other thing is, um, you know, about a prize is usually, we know about the purse, you know, yeah. what you get. But one of the things that XPRIZE does very great, in a great way, is defining the problem itself. So you want to tell us a little bit about how you go about doing that? Sure. At XPRIZE, we call ourselves solution agnostic. We don't care. We don't care at all whether, you know, it's an app, it's a, a device, uh, it sits on your head, it's hardwired into your brain, it's a nano chip that's inserted in your wrist, or, or it's something that you drag around the streets of Bombay, right? So we really don't care what the solution looks like. We are more interested in defining the problem in a way that is broad enough to attract crazy ideas, and crazy solutions. So, uh, you, you know, give me, we are going to see a couple of people sure. later. So maybe you can tell us how you define the problem for the Lunar X, uh, 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 Google Lunar X. Sure, how do you define sure. it? Sure, Well, the process is very long, right. that, you know, to, to come to this, and there are lots of experts involved, and everything is scientifically backed. But yes, it distills down to four simple things for the Google Lunar X Prize. You have to take off from Earth, you have to land on the moon, and then you have to move 500 meters. Again, we don't care if you hop, skip, uh, uh, scoot, jump, uh, <laughs> row, whatever you want to do. Uh, and then you have to send back high-resolution digital imagery. Send us a message from the moon to prove you're there. So those four simple guidelines, all of our X prizes are distilled down to those three, four, five simple seemingly, I should say, seemingly simple things that the winning team has to do. Lakshmi, if you think yeah. about it, um, we're like a race. So you have to have a very well-defined finish line. Because if you don't know you've won the race, then that's no good for anybody. Correct. So we really define that finish line in terms where nobody can dispute when you have finished. Maybe you could tell for the tricorder also what's the... Yeah, the tricorder, a handheld device or a device that fits in the palm of your hand that non-invasively can diagnose up to 15 health conditions. Okay. Yes. So I would like to ask both of you the last question of, you know, we have, you know, numbers, give or takes over 600 million people under the age of 35 in India alone. And if you look at the world, there's a lot of young people. 
what do you think we need to do, we could do to create a sense of responsibility and integrity into this crowd? In what way do you think we can also um, teach is not the right word, imbibe values mm -hmm. and not just results, which is what XPRIZE journey is all about. It's about the journey, it's not about the results. In what way can we imbibe that in the way they are going to evolve as very, very successful people? I think we need a whole new breed of superheroes. Um, and forums like Inc. bring those to the forum. I think we need heroes that have everyday backgrounds that are truly achieving amazing things, uh, both small and large in all kinds of different areas. And we need their stories to be brought to the forefront so that um, uh, the younger generation, and not just the younger generation, you know, my generation, the older generation, we all have um, new heroes every day, new role models every day, people to learn from that aren't just all about how rich they made it or how famous they made it uh, because of a particular talent. It's much, much more than that. And for a country of one point, uh, almost what 2.5 billion people, uh, we really need a whole new brand of superheroes, a whole new, new, new breed of them. Tata, what would you say? What would you like to? You know, I, I feel India, our, our country, has one tremendous attribute in, in the one, one billion plus people, and that is that we have been often been called a country of shopkeepers or a, we, a country of individuals who seek to have their individual uh, visibility. It may be a pan shop, it may be a larger shop, it may be some activity, but we are Entrepreneurs, DNA-wise, we as a as a country, we have ideas. What we don't have adequately is we don't have the opportunity to express ourselves. We don't have an infrastructure that helps finance us. We don't have an environment necessarily that motivates us or supports us. Us meaning the entrepreneur, the young entrepreneur. The worst thing that happens to us, I think, is that a young entrepreneur has an idea. It's an idea, it may be a way out idea, and the older person says, how successful has this been elsewhere? How many people have succeeded or utilized it? This is the kiss of death. No new idea is ever going to happen, but we have that potential. And I think if we have the motivators, the supporters, the equivalent of a venture capital community, then India is going to really go exponentially into this new era. And just like the United States has done over, over the last several decades, who would have thought that we have some of the companies that exist today and are considered highly valuable would be there. Who would have thought of Microsoft or Apple or SpaceX or any of these new names? They didn't exist some time ago. No one would have thought that Elon Musk could himself create a company that would compete with NASA. It would have been unheard of. So I, I think we have the potential. We need, we have the heroes, but they're embedded in uh, a more traditional structure. We need to unleash them. And I think, you know, in wrap up, I'd like to say that as we unleash them, as we get the younger people, I think they need mentors, our elders, you know, parents that can guide them the right way too. So to have all of you with your experience guide a lot of uh, the young people. So I just want to say today I've successfully completed checking off Ratan Tata on my list. So thank you very much. <laughs> and I hope this is just the beginning. And thank you so much for being here.